There's a very old joke from many, many years ago. Oh, good, you're going to tell a joke. Only if you've never heard the joke. Does the phrase death or Ugumba mean anything to you? No, Magumbo means something Okay. To you. These three guys get stranded on an island. They think they're alone until they're captured by the natives that live there on this island. And they're tied up and brought to the tribal chief. He looks at the first one and he says, death or Ugumba? He says, what is Ugumba? Death or Ugumba? Well, I would like to, death or Ugumba? He doesn't want to die, so he says, Ugumba. And the tribal chief says, Ugumba! All the men come out and sodomize him. Goes up to the second one. Death or Ugumba? Second guy says, oh man, I, I, I don't want to die, but death or Ugumba? He takes a deep breath. He says, Wait, Ugumba. Too. Ugumba! All the men come out and they sodomize him. Goes to the third guy. Death or Ugumba? Third guy looks at him and he says, Death. The tribal chief smiles and he says, Death by Ugamba! <laughs> God. Just. Hey, welcome back to our stupid directions of Corbin. I am Ugamba. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you, Super of course, on Patreon. Follow us for the content. Subscribe to the like button. I wish I had my dad joke cup, but I don't. It's the grandpa one. Today, uh, we have a video from Film Companion, and it's actually Shahid Kapoor. It's hey! Count to five. Uh, Shahid Kapoor, uh, he actually goes over five of his films in depth. Uh, and different things. So, like, four of them we've seen, one of them we haven't. Why? Uh, which films are chosen and by who and why? By him? Film Companion, I suppose. They just choose him? All right, I hope. Jab we met. Great. Kameni. Great. Header. Great. Oda Punjab. Great. I'm and in. then there's also one we haven't, which is Ishk Vishk. Ishkvishk. Ishk, Ishk. I remember Ishk, the Ishk. title. Yeah, I think we've seen maybe the trailer or a yeah. couple songs Ishk, or something. Uh, it was a very early film of his, so I think he was still Chocolate Boy at the time. Um, but uh, he's just going to go over and he's going to go awesome. in depth into acting and, and, and different stuff about the film. Great, so, great, great. I'll always love Film Companion. Here we go. Like this video, please subscribe to Film Companion. Shahid, thank you so much, first of all, for making time for Counter 5. So I'm going to show you five scenes from your career. 16 years, 28 films is what IMDb says. So I'm still under 30? <laughs> you I'm are. bad, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm bad. I've not done so many films. You have done so many You know, sometimes you yeah. cringe about the fact that you've done so many huh. that, uh, you know, you're like, that's so wrong. <laughs> you know, because you need to give give each film time and, yeah. you know, so. so no, 20 no. is not so bad. 20 is not so bad. I thought I'd cross 30. No. Actually, but... I stopped counting. So I thought I'd cross 30, but 20. You have years. now. Yeah. You can look at <laughs> it. 16 years, 28 films. Yeah, that's less than two films a year, so that's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. <laughs> So, I want you, Shai, to watch the scene and then just go back to what you can remember. Just deconstruct it for us. What was your brief? How did you get into so character? I have a terrible memory, but I'll try my best. Huh. I might be the wrong candidate for your show, but I'll try <laughs> my best foot forward. I don't have anything to do with it. Who is this? That's right. Huh? I'm in this? Show us me. No, we're, we're relying on you to do better than that. Let's start at the beginning, okay. 2003. Wow. Yes. You've not done anything? It's not starting. It's not starting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I need some chocolate. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Mr. Spencer College, Raji Mathur. That's me. Dog. Not bad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's waiting for him to say that. Thank you. You're going to get very cringy expressions. <laughs> This is hurting him to watch. But just you wait and watch Mr. Javed and Mr. Danny. He's like, thank God that's over. Why? Oh God. I cringe when I watch a lot of my work from the past because I don't know, I just feel like I was so bad. Uh, but you weren't so bad. It's so fresh and kind of, you know. Yeah, but you know, fresh is just a, you know, it's not a word that you can attribute to yourself and say that, you know, it was my achievement. It's not a note you want to get. Work. That acting Freshness was so fresh. It used to be, you know, uh, you know, it's just because you're new. Right. Yeah. You know, and 
if you have a slightly pleasing personality um people tend to kind of forgive you for uh, all your imperfections and stuff that's know? very true you know i i mean i just look at it and i i feel like um, i guess i was right for the film yeah because i didn't need to be anything more than what it is right he has these <laughs> rough edges and i think that kind of works for the character uh what do i remember about this scene well we shot this scene uh on a 23 hour shoot day oh so yeah we did have shit. long days which was a film full of new you guys need a union <laughs> no joke and, uh, wow uh, this was one of those days when we had to finish a lot of work in one day because this was rajiv rajiv's house rajiv right. mathur yeah. and so we had to finish all of his work in one day all that house ka work in one day and so we i think took this shot around 1 in the morning or something <laughs> and uh, Jeez, man. so i was extremely exhausted that's one thing that i remember uh how many takes i think 10 or 11 takes wow. uh, because it's like you know it's just it's me ending yeah and you know usually at that time it's a monologue it's a monologue yeah. kind of done a few yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes yes so think of it this is also my introduction shot so Correct. my career kind of started with monologues i never really thought about that right. so i guess that makes like, <laughs> poetic justice or whatever weird You knew your lines. Are you? Are you? I knew my that? lines so well that sometimes the director t- had to tell me like, "Shayad, you know them too well. Make huh. them sound like they're just coming out of your mouth." <laughs> like you, you know, because huh. I was super enthusiastic, excited, and like huh. stuff. But I was very nervous before this shot. Like for me, this shot, I was more nervous before this shot than I was before my Heather speech. Really? Yeah, because it was a monologue, and it was huh. a, for the first time that I was going to do something. And like your director, sure. and your director was introduction. Vish- you know, so I was like, dude, this is the first time people are going to watch me. And you had Vishal. Like, yeah, Forty yeah. seconds or whatever. So you, you're in like, his hands. Cut and go somewhere else. Because right. it's and he's trying to shot, prove, right? you know, he. Mo- so I, I need to do head, well. So that's all on there, you know. Ended up saying that, bro, you know, you need to be an actor and you need to be able to hold this shot for thirty seconds. You know, so I was really nervous before this shot. How old were you? I was twenty-two. Yeah, quite young. 22 today, I think, is a lot more grown up than 22, uh, 15, 16 years yeah, back. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And I was, yeah, I was just like this kid from Lokanwala who didn't really know too much, but just really wanted to be in front of the camera. And I thought I knew how to act, but <laughs> I kind of knew how to be comfortable in front of the camera. I was, like you said, kind of fresh, mm-hmm. and uh, it's very endearing. Of course, it is. It you is, know? but not for me. It's <laughs> <laughs> for the audience, <laughs> right? To you, it may be, but for him, it's painful to look uh, at. But I mean, a lot of people think that I'm a star kid or something. But actually, you know, I never lived with my dad, and when I got cast for this film, they didn't even know I'm his son. Right. Uh, you know, that happened much later because oh, I wow. never really presented myself like that because mm. it was a complicated family dynamic. So every time I go for an audition, I'm going to sit down and explain to them. Aisa hua tha. Then na phir aisa ho gaya tha. Then aisa ho gaya tha. Isliye yar, I am this, but I don't know. But I am this. Right. You know, so it's a bit complicated. So I was like, I used to just, you know, say, okay, my name is Shahid, and yeah. used to and move on. And move on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah. then, yeah. So I remember my mom. Was, uh, actually, a lot of what uh, you see of me in this film came from uh, the, the support that my mom gave me. Uh, mm. She was almost every day on the set with me. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, but you didn't find that. Um, no, so I used to seek her out. I used to seek her out. I was not that confident uh, where I would tell her that you know I know what I'm doing. Mm. You know, I think uh, that's something that exists in this generation a lot more than that generation. Right. Uh, and I, I think that's really good. Mm. I think people are very confident and very prepared, and uh, people kind of are very self-assured and they know what they want to do. They've already decided in their heads, yeah. and we can see all that. You yeah. know, with, with, yeah. with actors today. Why do I do? It's like mom just stick around because if I'm messing up, like I want to like have somebody right. who I really trust, who I've grown up with. Also, you know, my mom had was always an aspiring actor. She was a wonderful Kathak dancer. Yeah. She was a very good actor. Mm. Um, she did try to uh, her hand at mainstream cinema, mm. and mm. and you know things didn't work out exactly the way that she would have. So mm. it was almost like we were doing this together. Right. You know, like a part of my right. debut was also a part of her right. dream. You know, she's so living through you. She's she did live through me in yeah. many ways, especially yeah. uh, you know uh, we had a big struggle, and you know it was always a dream, mm. uh, a very far away dream that I would be in front of the camera and and be a mainstream Hindi film actor. Yeah. Uh, it 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 was just like something that we told ourselves that it will happen. but deep down you knew that it might never happen yeah. so when it was happening i wanted her by my side you know because that was the moment 
And it's Mama's she boy. Days Man, she would just stay as much as I would ask her to stay. And you know how we are as children. I say, Mom, now you leave. Huh. And she would leave. You know what I'm saying? Like so unconditional. That's like, amazing. I could just like tell her to be there. And she I didn't make it. you conscious. No. In fact, I would always look at the director, and right after looking at the director, I would look at my mom. Hmm. And you know, that reassurance from her huh. would mean the world to me. Right. You know. So I think I needed that hmm. in my first. But that's the only time. Yeah. After that, never. You know, yeah. she never came. In fact, she's hardly ever come on my film sets. Right. But that time, uh, it really mattered, and she was there. So I'll always so be lovely. thankful to her for that. She was always there, always like. <sighs> Good mama. So that is really? Yeah. She would tell you you could do better. Yeah. She wasn't willing to just say brilliant and. Not know. at all. Huh. Not at all. I mean, we had quite an honest relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think at that time we used to have film cameras. Uh, yeah, yeah. 2003. Yeah, would yeah. Be on film. So, yeah. so one other thing that was a massive thing was, uh, you know, cross talk. Right. I, I think it was. You like only have that much. Ten thousand bucks for four thousand feet, and mm. four thousand feet would last about four minutes or yeah. something. Yeah. Or maybe yeah. I'm saying wrong, but four five minutes ka hota uh, That's uh, money. Uh. Or uh, the it's actual use, product yeah. with every the second that passes, yeah. You used to start building on it. You know, yeah. It's like you can use it like trash. Yeah. Right. You know, it doesn't matter. Just it's non-stop. Like massive. when you when you know that you have only so many opportunities and every opportunity has a cost attached to it, it yes. changes everything, right? I mean, today it's like we can keep farting around if we want, and then when we get it, we get it. You know, it's like everything can be a rehearsal and everything can be. Let's just see how it goes. Right, you know, right. that time it was like you know, it's not like a live performance, but kind of. Because right. you're gonna get eight or nine shots, yeah. and then the director's gonna turn around and say, "Dude, I can't." We've yeah, only got so much yeah. tape. You know, raw stock on you. We're moving on. Mm. I'll make the most mm. of what I can. And you were aware of this at 22. Oh yeah, I've assisted in direction and stuff. Right. When you're dying to be an actor, you do all your research. Yeah. You know, you find out everything that you can find out about. So Rock and yeah. roll. Yeah. I did. I did my bit. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay, let's go to scene number two. You know what, Geet? तुम्हारी ये मन की कहानी वाली फिलोसफी है ना इसे तुम अपने पास रखो राइट नाउ आई कमिंग विद मी तुम मुझे फोर्स नहीं कर सकते हो आदित्य ऑफ कोर्स कर सकता हूं गीत गीत यू कमिंग विद मी आदित्य छोड़ वाइट इन दिस सो वाइट ये मेरी जिंदगी है चले जाओ यहां से अकेला छोड़ दो मुझे एंड ऑल दैट आदित्य नाउ दैट्स अ नाइस सी दैट्स Alleged nice scene, you know. Even ten years, fifteen years down the line, if I was to look back at that, I'd say like that was a nice scene. Yeah. Uh, can't say that about the scene. So <laughs> <laughs> I got lucky. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is a legit nice scene. It's actually a very memorable scene for most people. Um, I love love when you just pause when she says, "Is ka ye matlab nahi ki tumara chance hai?" Says, "Dhyan rakho." That's actually the nicest part of this character and their yeah. relationship. You know, mm -hmm. it was one of the first. films where uh, the hero of the film wasn't you know loved by the heroine of the film right. madly and and right. you know it was a very real kind mm. of a mm. take at how the two protagonists or the hero heroine of the film and how their relationship can be and and you know uh, so yeah i remember this day was a bad day for me uh, you know um, in the sense that You know, when you keep shooting back to back to back to back to back, there is always that one day or that some moment that you reach, and uh, you know it's something you battle. Nothing's and I working. Think you get better, right? I think, with time, because you learn to be aware of the fact that you will get spent at some point, mm -hmm. and so you need to be very. Uh, you need to consult. You need to be very, very, very in, kind of instinctively aware of. How you are going to conserve your energy and mm -hmm. and be aware of the scenes that are going to be demanding and uh, keep yourself. So always do the demanding ones first. Entrenched in the character, you know, you have to keep yourself wet. Right. You know, right. uh, because every day it's almost like the character is going to like do that to you. Great analogy. So all the. So you've been shooting a long time for so jumping. This was towards the end of the schedule. Right. And uh, I was just not being able to feel the emotion, and. Uh, I know people really like this scene, but I was pushing. Mm. I was actually pushing the emotion this day, uh, and therefore the, the you know it's very out there. Right. Uh, I'm like I'm really like you know really saying my lines, and yeah. I'm really you can yeah. see the neck, and you can yeah. because I was not feeling it mm. enough, and so I was feeling the need to compensate for that, yeah. and mm. you know perform more. You know that happens with that. It happens, man. It, it, it happens. happens. It's very few directors. I think it's more to do with your relationship with the filmmaker, mm. where they know, um, but you know, right? You know when you're giving a shot, and you know when you're 
feeling the shot. Yep. And you know, always. if you're not feeling it, there's no way to put it on. The audience won't, won't always know. That right. You're not but you know. <laughs> but you know. You'll definitely know. Sometimes the audience will know. It's possible to feel every moment mm -hmm. uh, completely. I don't know. There might be some actors out there who can see. Especially in film, because you do second. stuff in such but, I mean, I'm blocks, and, and as opposed to theater. Where I'm just on, and it's just flowing. And there are days where I feel like uh, uh, you, you have know, to strain a little more. I need to, like, honestly, acting comes naturally to me. Uh, I'm I, a lot of people think that I'm a method actor and all this because it's you know the roles that I play are very complex and 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 the, and I don't like. Better people have liked me. It's been different from what they've seen me in the past, and that's been the reason why people like me. Okay, yeah. Arey, he surprised me. Did something different. So. But I'm not. With time, I have become very instinctive. Like I started off with a lot of thoughts, and I and, the, and I was process oriented, and you know, I, I used to put a lot of brain, mm -hmm. you know, into it. Uh, it was an intellectual process, and over a period of time, it became a very emotional. Process. It became a very organic process. It became a very. It stopped becoming a process. It just right. started happening, you know. Mm. And I feel that it's like a gut reaction. It's just. It just needs to be what it is, and just you need to flow with it. It's like energy, yeah. you know. I think habituated and instinct. The better you get at that, the less. Your I think you're thinking of hibiscus. Become, uh, you know, you can't feel the effort. Yeah. You know that effortlessness starts coming in, uh, and sometimes you're fine. School of acting. The audience and filmmakers, my point of view as an actor, sometimes is that just being effortless becomes being a great actor. Mm -hmm. But you have to be effortless in different things. Right. When you learn to become like a Meryl Streep, right. you know, you see her perform, and she does such different roles. Do you say Kangana? She's effortless in all those characters. Being effortless at being yourself is is somebody who's good at emoting. Uh, but I think being a great actor is about being effortless at different people, mm -hmm. different characters. You know, representing. That's why your phone's the goat, baby. That to me is really great acting, mm -hmm. and that requires time and effort and having a very open mind and and and. Requires a lot of time and effort to do nothing. And 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 uh, trusting yourself at the same time. Mm -hmm. And trusting your actors, mm -hmm. trusting the cameraman. Just allowing yourself to let loose and discover. You know, it becomes a journey of discovery as opposed to I want to do this right. and I'm going to go achieve that. It's not like you fully plan it out. Yeah, it's not like yeah. a, you know, like yeah, like a house that you're building Correct. that you need to break Correct. it down. It's it's a living organism. At this point, you feel you were still doing that. I was very. In fact, I remember Imtiaz once had a chat with me, and we were in Manali, and he just took me for a walk. And I used to take a lot of pride in the fact that I was very prepared. Okay, and he just took me and he put his arm around me. He said, you know, Shahid. A good actor. Just stop thinking about it. Mm. Just great advice. I look at him. I felt great bad. advice. I said, "Yar, my effort ko yeh se matlab. Don't you appreciate the effort I put in?" <laughs> <laughs> and I think that reflects in this character. You know, because the efforts in the prep. Yeah. The there shouldn't be effort in the <laughs> presentation. Yeah. yeah. You know, it looks like they're. Um, you know, you can see straight lines, and it's yeah. geometric. Correct. You know, it's not fluid. Yeah. You know. Mm. Yeah. And uh, that really worked for Aditya Kashyap, yeah. you know, because I think that contrast between how he was and how Geet was is what made the film what it is. Absolutely. And so I guess I was right for the part. Uh, this is one of my favorite scenes. I did struggle a lot on this scene. You did. I did struggle a lot, and um, yeah, it's a lovely scene. It's it's a very nice scene. So when you look back, you're happy. I'm happy because I've done other things after that. Right. Which way? <laughs> which was really decent. <laughs> you know. So this kind of works in the you know sometimes things that are limitations actually end up working in your favor. So mm. it works in different ways. Yeah. Like that, yeah. 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 Okay. What are you going to party? Oh, come in. It's going to get to talk about Vishal. Is it nice that you chose a scene of good news? Because I felt that the poor guy got overshadowed by Charlie. Yeah. Because everybody was so into Charlie. He could be seen both the. Hey, brother. You are a great brother. Dhanu, you are not at all tired. Come. Look. Ha 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 ha. Dhanu, Dhanu, Dhanu. It's too good, man. 
This is a great scene choice. Also, like when he gets his <laughs> dark sarcasm, <laughs> right, is untouchable. Yeah, like, he's he at another he bloody is. level. This is like how so he, like, funny and so, so scary. Exactly, you know. <laughs> It's so awesome when he does that. And you're so afraid for this poor guy, you know? Yeah, yeah, like I can feel that, you know, that tension correct, in the correct. room and I'm yeah. not even there, but I can feel yeah. it. Like, I'm like, what's going to happen to him now? Right, right. And we used to be laughing before the scene. Because it's so bloody funny when you read the line and you read the scene. Right. And when he says this, I think yeah. you're like, dude, that's really fun. And then you have to go out there and really do it. Yeah. Like, this yeah. is serious shit. It's going yeah. down right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not funny. <laughs> You know, I don't know. He is so commercial. Some, yeah. some, this deep part of Vishal sir is just so commercial. Yeah. Ten cookies of powder in his guitar. I can't believe this bang sound. <laughs> this was this was a very special scene, and uh, when we read it, we knew that the writer has written a great scene, which is Vishal sir, obviously, has written a great scene, and uh, it's very dark. Um, it's really funny and entertaining and very commercial, uh, and we need to do it in a manner where at no point do people feel like it's a scene. You really need to feel like this is happening. Uh, and the first conversation that me and Vishal sir had about Kameen was, he said, you know, both my heroes uh, have a speech defect. And at no point in time do I want people to feel that we are making fun of people who have speech defects. Mm. Uh, so it's just who they are. It is who they are. And uh, we need people to relate to them at every level. Uh, people should feel what they're feeling, understand them as people. Uh, and yeah, they should be no different from any other character. You know? So, so that was the challenge. The challenge was to, you know, be able to make people feel how it is to be there. Because mm -hmm. then you can't, then you can't make fun of it. Yeah. You know, then, then, then it, it, it touches you somewhere deep down, and that makes impact. And that would probably be more relevant than just having the scene where. It, which is funny and you're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so I met a lot of people who had speech defects. And there's a reason why people stammer. It's different from uh, something like lisping. Lisping is more of a technicality. It's a right. physiological problem. But stammering is a psychological problem. Mm. Um, and it's amazing, you know, the kind of stories I heard when they told me why they started stammering. And as a parent today, when I look back, it, it's of great help. Because right. a lot of times it happens when is spoken to very strongly or you or you see something that's too much for you to absorb uh, as a child and because of that you know mm. it just becomes an uh, you know turns into a physical problem because psychologically you've been so affected uh, so that was amazing to know um, but Chad, until this point until Kamine mm. you're doing films uh, uh, many of them were love stories many yeah. the, you know it felt like this was really like a massive leap. It was. I mean, you it know, was. It was. Yeah, right? For course. you as an actor. Because I was doing that typical shit. Yeah. <laughs> so it went from it went from fluff to actually, substance. Uh, you know, got the opportunity and and fortunately with a great filmmaker. Yeah. Uh, in great form. Yeah. At a time in his life when he was raring to go. You know, and so was I. Yeah. And he just. God sent him to me because I had done nothing to deserve this opportunity. I don't know what in his head made him decide that Shahid ko lete in those games. <laughs> and then when he threw it at me, I was like, uh, wow, yeah. you know, here's an opportunity to really change it up. But did you ever have a moment of, what if I just can't do it? Like, are those kind I, of self doubts ever in there? I, the only reason I'm sitting here today, and I think I always, it's really stupid, but I always thought that. I am a very actor and I am a star. Barunga. Like that was just like set in my head. Mm. It was set. You knew this? I mean, I believed it. Right. Is it the truth? I am still figuring out. <laughs> you know what I am saying? But there was this voice inside me which gave me that drive. For me, I think he said I want to be an actor, not a star. You really sort of... You are highbrow, bro. <laughs> like, you know, you are the cream of the... 
you know the most snooty <laughs> critics the you know the critics are always like shitting on us that they are going to trash me only she is one of them so chalo i need some impact yeah. <laughs> you did i love this movie thank you so love kamine and let's go on to another performance that i love there it ah. is oh ji chana बचपन में तू क्या कहता था बड़ा होके मोजे से निका करूंगा <laughs> और रोज रात आके डॉक्टर साहब और मेरे बीच में सो जाता था mm. अच्छा डॉक्टर साहब मुझे छूते भी थे ना तो लड़ता था उनसे तू और अब तो उनके भाई आपको छूते हैं I adore this film so much. Oh. Zehr khoobsurat hai aap. Amazing. Love the lines, dude. What yeah. Lines. What a script you were given. I think it's the lines that, you know, the great dialogue writers have written that that give actors the opportunity mm. uh, to show complexity to be able to throw the audience off or you know make him back in a manner which because it's the words that come out of your mouth yeah. i mean if the words don't have don't provide you that opportunity then you know then there's no point because mm. you can't force something that doesn't already exist you can only take from what's in the script and uh, of course there there are films which which are great because of the screenplay because of the drama because of the emotion but for an actor i mean when you get lines which have this kind of you know just lines which are so kick ass yeah. that's all you can say yeah. they just kick ass lines you know yeah. it's, it's it's you know tell me when you have a line like that or unke bhai aapko chhote hai to main kya karu how do you decide how you're going to play it you don't it's very instinctive It was very instinctive because play I was already naturally. You don't make decisions beforehand no. how to play it. It felt it. like something I can't help, and something that pains me so deeply. Yeah. But it is what it is. So it just you know sometimes you say you you remember something from the past and you just like and that happened you know it's that kind of a thing mm. for him because mm. he can't help it that, you know and now his brother touches you. Yeah. It's such a simple scene. Actually, it happened very simply. We didn't really work at it much. It just we just shot it, and you know, Tabu is a great actor. Yeah, I mean, yeah. she is just one of the finest actors of her generation. Amen. And she's just getting better and better and better with time. Because I think it's not really about her getting better; it's just about people recognizing who she is mm. and giving her opportunities and cinema reaching uh, a stage where it deserves her, yeah. <laughs> so to say. Yeah. Mm. You know, because the films that she did initially, the characters in the films were so. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Yeah. There was nothing great there. Correct. But today because that stuff is happening and and when people think about who can do it it's only her. Yeah. She she's only one who can do stuff like this. Yeah. Um and she's still so beautiful and young and she Correct. still doesn't really Correct. have that motherly quality. Yeah. That's what made this equation work. Yeah. yeah. You know if you had yeah. somebody who was maybe older and yeah. and you know then that that oddness. No, no. So is that moment when he puts that itter on her Correct. and he you know Correct. he gives her a peck on her neck. Yeah. You know so there has to be a closeness in it. Yeah. And and I was very clear about the fact that I don't ever use it as a tool to titillate the audience. Mm. It it has to be something that makes you uncomfortable. Right. And it does. Uh, yeah. So so it was always meant to be like that that people should feel uncomfortable. They should not like what's happening. Mm. You know. Uh, but the characters can't be uncomfortable. No, it's exactly. Just, yeah. The mood has to make you feel like. Yes. It. What does Vishal do for you that no other director does? Mm. I don't know. I think you know some things are uh, destined. Mm. You know, certain equations are destined, and uh, there's always somebody who brings the best out in you. And I think uh, Vishal sir is that person in my life. He's brought the best out in me. And I think every actor is fortunate to find one or two people like that. You're not going to find too many. Right. Uh, it's just. It's just something which is special, and uh, yeah, he 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 makes me look better than I am. I don't know. I mean, it's his lines. It's, it's so many things. It it can't be explained. Everybody in the films that he does are great. You know. Yeah. Everybody is suddenly at another level. Correct. So yes. Has to do with the filmmaker's yeah. craft. Does he do anything specific with you in his briefing? In his 
sort of just what he wants from characters. He just scares the shit out of you <laughs> by giving you the part. Something he gives it to you and you're like. <laughs> but can't let him go. It's a great opportunity. Right. So right. you know, you you put yourself you put yourself in that position where you can't let it go, but you're so scared of messing it up or falling short. You know, and with Hamlet, you always fall short. Right. That kind of oh character. Oh my God. That's what a correct. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It's the choices that we make that make us who we are, and he makes great choices for actors for sure. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Last one. तो दी इंस्पिरेशन दे चक्कर विच हां जी मुंडा चे आओ सदी शंकर इन द शॉट इज सो आओ जो पहुंचा Great scene choices. <laughs> I love this role. <laughs> great stuff. <laughs> great stuff. Oh, it's a great scene. Man. Yeah, great stuff. It's a great love, scene. I love, love the expression this. on your face. <laughs> love the scene. I love the scene. And then you show me this again. <laughs> <laughs> You've come a long way. No, that was such a nice scene. Such a nice scene. Actually, that's my probably one of my favorite scenes in the film. But people liked a lot of other scenes, and you know. No, that was a um, good. Especially so was the header choice. Starting up and cooking. Yeah. Up and Great yeah. choices. Weirdly, those are the louder things that people tend to, you know, get affected by, and you know. But these are the things that you do roles for. You know, these yeah. are the kind of scenes people do yeah. for. Such a nice scene. Actually, I had so much fun watching it because I haven't really seen it for really long. So it was really nice to see. It was like nice to like look at something and say like. Yeah, yeah when you're that far away from it, you get a different really perspective. You can again, see it more objectively. Yeah. You don't know whether to laugh. You don't know to be whether to be afraid. You know, it's it's. I it's, find Tommy's character very funny. He is very funny. You know, as an audience, like right. like as a reader, when I was being read the part, I was just cracking up because I just found him like extremely stupid, yes. and highly entertaining, yeah. and just a mess. Right. You know. Right. And I'm right, very much the opposite of that as a person. Like my whole life, I've spent keeping it together. That's the kind of person that I am. And mm-hmm. people tell me that you know, just relax, girl. Right. You know, I'm kind of like, let go. yeah, yeah. You uh-huh. know, so it was completely the opposite. And like you know, how he's saying that you know, I'm London, Jana, I'm London, Jana. You know, and and my interpretation of uh, in one line of the character actually uh, has been shown very, like it's as close to. that interpretation in my head he was a 5 year old punjabi child who didn't know what the hell he wants and he was lost right okay so my entire because if you don't show him as an overgrown child you can't forgive him yeah for correct point you know when you know uh, you know whether it's your kids or whether it's you know your cousins or somebody else's children when they do something wrong you know they don't know any better right. so what you tend to do is you tend to try and explain it to them you get irritated with them right it's a mistake versus an intentional deception or something for yeah yes and, you know things sure. and that was the only way that we could have got tommy to be liked and Absolutely. loved otherwise he would be hated yep and if he was hated we lose the lose the purpose and the purpose was to take people through the journey of an addict And to Very make important. them understand what's going on in their love that movie. What all they're Great doing. movie. Him and Alia. Yep. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Then movie. they can be compassionate towards them and and kind Correct. of. Correct. If they ever have to engage with one, they can yeah. deal with him the right way. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm sure we'll all at some point in time come across somebody who's having an issue with addiction. We all have our issues with addiction yeah. of different things in life. Yeah. So 
this is just a very out there version of that. Um, and in this scene, I feel he is as childish, correct, and as vulnerable and as just you know stupid as he can be. This is literally shouting like a kid in a candy store, saying, you know. I'm on that chocolate. I'm on that chocolate. It's right. Like yeah, he's that. having a tantrum. My mummy made a chocolate. Yeah, yeah. So that's what he's doing. And then, then, yana, and then, yana, and then, yana. He's just, you know, he's just there. And Satish Angkal is so good. At he's this so thing. good. He's so bloody yeah, good. Yeah. I had so he's much so fun good. working with him, and you know. But Chad, when you do a role like this, um, is there ever any vanity about how you're going to come off, or, or are you? As an actor, what do you mean when you say vanity? Like, you vanity know, meaning? I just find it interesting how people ask actors about vanity. Like, what is their interpretation of vanity? Only, actor, only so. that even as a really messed up drug addict, mm. I should sort of look good. But um, I have to because he's also a rock star. Right? Like, no, no. I mean, this guy, yeah. Kabir Singh can't. Correct. No, if Kabir Singh starts she's looking, talking about the like, star mindset. Wow, First of all, Kabir he, Singh looked great. <laughs> she's asking him about the mindset and of a star, and he's defaulting to his mindset as an actor. Uh, I think that's how he always does. Yeah. Uh, is that Tommy Singh is this guy who people look up to, and he's a star, and he's a celebrity, and his introduction is, you know, singing in a studio, and then you see him performing on stage, and you know, so he's meant to be this. Larger than life. Larger than life guy, yeah. but yeah. at the same time, he's completely screwed, mm. and he is an addict. Mm. And I need to, so I needed to get both those things going. So it was so difficult to achieve it because cocaine addicts tend to lose a lot of weight, and you know, and 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 uh, as a star, he needed to have a good body. We wanted to do the whole tattoo thing with him, yeah. and uh, so it was really tough to find that. To bring both those things together, it's easy when you have a brief that's kind of single-dimensional. It's difficult when you have a brief which is so like op opposing to each other. Like mm -hmm. he is a drug addict, so he should look effed, right. and he is this rock star, so he should look amazing. Correct. So, like, how do you like? What do you do with that? Yeah. You know. Yeah. So we just like figured some way of doing it, and um, you know, it's not about looking good. It's about playing a character that's very attractive. And I think being attractive doesn't come from looks. I think it comes from how the audience feels when they watch a character on screen. That doesn't just have to. Yeah, of course, it's a good looking, but that's boring. You yeah. Know? Wow. You know, mm. that's boring. I mm. got that for the first four years of my career, and then I was like, it's done. Uh, you know, like let somebody else do it. Right. I'm bored. Right. You know? um, and I can get bored easily. You know, I need to stay in this. Sorry to pause it. Oh, my mm. issues. Like because I'm I know you have to edit it then, two, but I want to focus on our last few minutes. I have to pee so bad. I'm finishing a movie two, three days before I start telling people around me. They are okay, I have now done. And, so, and they are like, they get really thrown off. Like, yeah. what do you mean? This character still means so much from you. And I'm like, ah, but like, I've given everything. Now I want to go. So yeah, I mean, I wanted Tommy. Filming's a long process, man. I wanted people to be attracted to him because I couldn't have people respect him, appreciate him, mm. or, you know, none of those things because, mm. you know, uh, handsome is as handsome does. Is There's nothing this guy was doing that was, right. you know, nice. So right. he had to have that for, for the right balance, mm. you know, otherwise sometimes you can get very put off by a character. Yeah. And I'm happy to ha play a character where people get put off by me, but then that character shouldn't be a character which needs to be redeemed or a character who's lost. And my first feeling about Tommy was that he's lost. Yeah. And when somebody's lost, then you need people to feel for them. Mm. So right. I had to do all those things. Right. But when you look back at all these scenes, Shah, mm. do you feel... I, first of all, I must say that I'm, I'm, I'm really... Uh, uh, I actually really enjoyed the scenes you chose. I kind of knew the movies you'll choose, but I was, I enjoyed the fact that you chose the not the scenes like with Heather. You didn't choose the speech. Yep. Um, and say with Tommy Singh, you didn't choose the portion where he's passed out or the scene mm. with Alia. You chose the scene. So, mm. so I appreciate that because uh, you know some of those are my favorite scenes, but you know people don't really right. talk about them. So it was nice that you addressed some of those scenes. Shad, when you look back, um, do you feel like? You can pat yourself on the back and say, good job. Um, no, you know, it's kind of it's weirdly like the opposite kind of feeling, you know, like it makes you feel like, at least like right now, right now how I'm feeling. Uh, it kind of makes you feel nostalgic and you do feel a bit emotional because the, most of the characters that I've played have taken a lot from me, uh, you know, so they are a part of me in some way. Uh, 
and it's been 15 16 years i've been doing this and a lot of these roles have been spread over time so you know you know that these are special opportunities that come your way and uh, i feel very thankful very very thankful uh to all the filmmakers who gave me these opportunities uh and to god of course that he you know, gave me this made me an actor you know i never thought i would be one um and i feel really uh i hope that i get more opportunities like this yeah. you know because they don't come by every day and this is what i really love i feel like it would be a life well spent if i could do this for another 15 20 years you know get a few more of these and really be able to sink my teeth inside yeah. and and give people an experience that makes impact some Mm-hmm. you know because i think that that's the most beautiful thing about cinema and that's the least that's the last thing that we tend to focus on because it's surrounded by so many of these tropes you know the bells and whistles acche kapde ek to acche kapde pehenne se actor kyu banta hai aadmi mujhe ye samajh mein nahi aa raha why we are going this way where you know it's becoming so driven by social media that you're so conscious about your physical appearance correct you know your focus is so much on that that stepping out of your house somebody is clicking you and posting it somewhere you've already you know it's becoming like a like what's the difference between fashion week and actors yeah. i mean are we supposed to be uh uh you know like fitness uh uh you know like people you emulate who who are very fit so are we meant to be athletes are, are we meant to be fashionistas mm-hmm. or are we meant to be actors i mean there is it's you know it's getting very uh complicated and it's getting very uh stupid yeah you know we're missing the point and the point is people walk into the theater to have an experience which makes some impact with them emotionally mm-hmm. and touches their soul at some level and that has nothing to do with clothes in your body you know fully so i'm i'm i've done it myself you know so i mean with time i've learned that there's more to life than just being narcissistic and wanting to look amazing and go hey you know there's much more to life than that you know yeah. you want people to love you for the roles you play and for what you made them feel like you know that's really being what being an actor i remember seeing harrison ford's interview you know about indiana jones in one of the indiana jones and, and somebody asked him so do you do all your stunts yourself and he said uh, i'm an actor uh, they have a, a stunt man for <laughs> <laughs> act right. i love harrison so, ford so i do too you know so simply he said everything that needed to be said right. that let's understand who we are yeah you know what my job profile is you know because that profile is getting altered for all the wrong reasons yes and so these are the rules which helped me uh, you know i think film uh, acting and filmmaking is a very cathartic process you know it can have a deep impact on others and you cannot make deep impact with other people if you haven't made it with yourself yeah. i think somewhere the roles that you play the films that you do they really somewhere play a huge part in who you are as a person and your understanding of life your understanding of relationships your understanding of people and i think that is the deepest and the most beautiful part of this job mm-hmm. and i hope i get more roles where i can experience that i'm sure you will shy this was so much fun thank you i thank had a blast you. <laughs> even though we didn't know how to use our laptop <laughs> So we've got through. <laughs> Just as how pretty much most of my career was. I never knew I'm going to do it, but I got through. <laughs> Thank you. So if you like this video, please subscribe to Film Companion, and if you like one of those scenes, that kind of just emulates everything we've thought about Shahid. Yeah, and uh, we've heard him say candidly before about acting. We very early on in our getting to know him. He heard a clip about his understanding of the craft. He's first and foremost an actor. Yep, and wants that to be his main. I would love to hear him talk about more his 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 love for dance if he still has yeah, that love for dance. I would too. Um obviously I think since he's primarily an actor first and wants to be an actor first, most of the media roles don't have those dances yeah. that obviously happened earlier in his career mm-hmm. because that's more the commercial um aspect of film. Yeah. Um but I I would love to hear him talk a little more about that, but yeah, he, it's clear that And it, it, what he said is true. Filming is a interesting process because it's long. It's what a lot of people a lot of people think is this glamorous thing. You show up on set, you do these amazing scenes, and you do. But also, primarily, you're waiting around. You're doing the scenes that you don't care about as much, fifteen times sometimes if they can't get it correct. Mm-hmm. And you're doing all this sometimes twenty three hours a day. And so you're not always going to be your, your job as an actor is you 
you have to be on, but you're not always on. And like you said, the audience might not know, but you know that I wasn't in the correct headspace. A, a short film I just did recently, we and it was just a short film. We were on set for uh, all day, and the big emotional part of this, the the thing had ha was happening later in the day, mm. and I just couldn't I couldn't get couldn't mm. get to where I wanted to go. And everybody, all the other people were like, it it, it looks it looks great. I'm like, no, I. And they could tell that yeah. I was extremely disappointed in myself for for what I was giving them. And I was like, "Can you give me like like ten minutes?" <laughs> and I asked because I I think I was actually just really hot mm. under all the lights, right? And I I'm a very warm person, and so like I I think all my because I had to cry in the scene. All my tears were like dried because <laughs> you were like sweating all your liquid out. I couldn't out. Yeah. get anything out, and so and I, it was. You said this was at the end of the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I, I went outside. It was nice and cool. I mm -hmm. cooled off for about ten minutes. I came back. And I, luckily, I was able to do the scene how I wanted to do the scene. But like, I was just like, I was. I guess I was just burnt mm -hmm. and really hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a, like the, all this stuff just happened. Sure. Uh, during the day, but like it's also as an actor, you know when you give the correct performance. Yes, the audience might not know, right? Like, because you can, we could trick the audience, but we always know where we are, and you know if you've given what you've wanted to give, you can feel it. Mm -hmm. It's instinctual. Yeah, right? absolutely, it is. Yeah, but also like it's twelve hours of just you might do a ten second scene. I right, cut. You don't continue. It's very rare that there's a continual shot like in theater. It's very rare. And then you're not even guaranteed the scene's going to work because it's going to be changed in editing. Yeah. There's scenes that work. I was talking to a director friend of mine last year about he was called in to help edit something on a first time director. He was on set when they filmed a scene. Uh -huh. And the scene was so beautiful that everyone on set was moved. They were so excited. And when he was shown the final edit, my director friend, it just didn't work. It was clunky and did mm. not feel good. And he talked to the director about that and said, here's what you've done. We all witnessed the work of the actors that day. But your editing screwed it up. Mm. And the director agreed. It's why he showed it to my friend who is directed for 35, 40 years, who then went and made changes to the editing so that there was less edit, more flow from the scene. Yeah. But the opposite is true as well, thankfully. You can be saved by a magnificent yep. director where you have a day where it's not an working. Editor, yeah. And the director and editor know, and they make editing choices that make it work. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can make a film... 180 degree difference yes just with editing the most astonishing thing that i've ever experienced as an actor is when you're certain nothing's working on stage and your process is just not instinctual it's not habituated it's not in the moment and you and your fellow actors know it everything's flat the audience isn't responding and you go out for your curtain call and they rise to their feet and give you a standing ovation and you're talking to them after they're, and they're blown away. And you as the cast are going, no idea how that happened. <laughs> and then there's the shows where everybody feels like it's on all cylinders. You felt so good and then it's over and it's a real tepid response. Not one person stands up. You're like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's the great. mystery of acting. But yeah, filming is, especially f filming as opposed to theater, is just such a different animal because yeah, yeah. it's your your approach as an actor is the same but the the actual process yeah of it's, doing it is very very different that's why a lot of actors love theaters because it's this continual emotion and you can really get yeah. into you don't it's an actor's medium there's not ten thousand stops in between yeah which is why some theater actors can't be film actors and, and vice versa yeah they each have their pros and cons you have to be able to turn it on when there's nothing you've done Nothing at all, or also you might have done this emotional scene, or a, a really silly scene before, yeah. And now you have to go into the extreme emotion if or they're if they're very mean to you. You better have your character's arc and everything fully fleshed out and know your script backwards and forwards because we've mentioned this before. You're not going to be filming everything within context, and so you have to already know where this character is and what's going on in the story and have all of your questions answered because yeah. you may start day one the legendary story of Lin-Manuel Miranda working on uh, Tick, Tick, Boom oh, yeah. and the climactic moment catharsis for the lead character in the film they had to shoot the very first day of filming because that's when they could get Central Park 
Well, you didn't have any chance to get to inhabit this character while filming. You better have known that day one. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's and amazing. obviously Shahid is such a brilliant actor, and you could tell he he and you could see it in his work. He yeah, yeah, yeah. cares so much. Yeah, um, and he's he's such a, a great actor, which obviously he gets from his dad, and I'm guessing his mom. Uh, he's a very big part of his life, and um, he's very actor stepmom. And yep, he, like <laughs> um, it's it's he's such a great actor. I would love to be able to sit down and have a chat with him about it. Yep, um, but. Uh, Anyways, let us know what the next Shahid Kapoor, obviously, besides Bloody Daddy, and any other information about him that we need to know down below.